Our guest this week excels in non-medical services to maintain loved ones' independent lifestyle. She received awards both in Madison, Wisconsin, USA, and also in the Philippines. She is currently the Chief Financial Officer of Angels Helpers, Inc., Juliet Nowak. Before we'll proceed to the main interview, I would like to remind the viewers to click on the subscribe button as well as the bell button so you get a notification every time a video is being released. This is Jeanette Jordi at Global Inspiration, where you need to be seen, need to be heard, and be an inspiration to the world. Let us all welcome Juliet Nowak. Welcome to the show, Juliet. Thank you, Janet, and everyone at Global Inspiration for having me, and a warm hello to all the viewers. Let's all keep safe in this unprecedented time. Correct, correct. I am curious, and the viewers are curious, why did you move from the Philippines to America? I moved here because of the famous American dream, of course. Mm -hmm. And for me, that was to carve a space for myself in this land of opportunities. Growing up in the Philippines, I've been reading about the endless possibilities in this country. Mm -hmm. My belief solidified when I first set foot here in 2001 to attend the leadership seminar for Amway. Okay. a multi-level marketing company that started here in the United States. That trip afforded me a first-hand experience in seeing how everyone here has equal opportunities. Throughout the seminar, I felt as if I finally captured my dream and I wanted to hold it in the palm of my hands forever. And that experience started my American journey. Okay. So do you have any family members here in America? Yes, I have cousins here and they are busy making a life for themselves as well. Yeah. So I understand you have a business. What is the name and the mission of such entity? In 2018, I founded Angels Helpers based in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And I am blessed with my business partners, Arlen Isaac and Catherine Dayao who are as driven and dedicated as me. The mission of Angels Helpers is to provide services to elderly and disabled in the comfort of their homes. We focus on personalized plans, care plans, okay. that are tailored to their needs. And in the process, we aim to render care that goes above and beyond in order to optimize our clients' well-being. Okay. You have received an award, not only in Madison, Wisconsin, but also from the Philippines. You received from the city of Ormoc, from the actor, Mayor Richard Gomez, and his wife, the actress, Congressman Lucy Torres. Yeah, the power couple in Leyte, Ormoc City, yes. I was nominated by my classmate, Alma Ekstrom. Um, she's somewhere in the Europe. She lives in Europe. And then... Um, one day I received an email from um, Australia, Maria Serafica Pangilinan, or we, they call her Teleng. She's the founder of Ormok Festival and Cultural Foundation. And I was, an, I was awarded a Garbo Award. Uh, Garbo means the pride, the pride of Ormok. That, that's, that's the meaning of Garbo Award. The city of Ormok, Philippines, recognizes and appreciated my contribution in giving pride to the people of the city, the government of Ormoc City as well, for my contribution in home care industry in the United States, which has gained recognition. Okay. So I understand, Juliet, I consider you as successful. So what do you think is the attitude one must have in order to be successful in the non-medical services? Persistence. That's what I always instill in everybody's brain. <laughs> Persistence. Okay. Persistence. Building a business from yeah. scratch entails a lot of hard work and belief in yourself. 
looking back, way back, long years ago, there have been a lot of challenges from establishing our presence in and looking for clients to expanding the coverage of our operations. But my firm and focused continuance brought me to where I am right now. Okay. When you want to be successful in doing whatever it is that matters to you, mm-hmm. you need to be prepared to look beyond the challenges and yeah. handle yeah. the whatever curveball yeah. that is thrown to you. So yes. persistence is what turns a novice into a champion. Correct, correct. And I know you have the persistence. We've been friends for a long time, and I know you have that. Now, we will talk about COVID. COVID affects a lot of businesses. A lot of businesses, they closed because of COVID. But there are also businesses that they developed, they progressed. And my question is, how does this COVID pandemic affected your business? To say that COVID has affected everyone all over the world is an understatement, more so for the business community. The most challenging period for us, uh, I still recall, uh, was the first and second quarter of 2020. At that time, the world was grappling, you know, with the first impact of the pandemic on healthcare. And for us in the healthcare business, that meant having to navigate the protocols and restrictions, you know, correct, the correct. and everything. Yeah. What yeah. was clear to me at that time was we couldn't afford to slow down because we have clients and their families who depended on us for excellent care. So what did we do? The biggest challenge was hiring caregivers because, you know, you need to really mm. see them and, you know, talk to them personally. But it was not, you know, that was not yeah. feasible. So given the protocols, we could not meet them in person. So we had to innovate in the way we interview and provide job orientation. So thanks to the technology, like what we do right now, and we were able to do it that virtually. Yeah. As we all know, caregiving isn't an easy job. It's really very hard. We had to ensure that our staff understands the client's needs, which are in different stages of the care spectrum. Because, you know, from simple companionship only, that's easier to as complicated as 24-hour care to managing behavioral expressions. Remember, there are people that we take care with dementia and, you know, and it's really hard, very challenging. Plus the pandemic, it was very, very challenging. But again, persistent help us weather the storm and continue to provide excellent care. Correct, correct. COVID affected a lot of people. Did you envision to be in this business while you were in college, because I understand you had a degree at computer science. Do you envision yourself to be in this business? And do you have, do you have any experience why you are in this business? To be honest, I really didn't envision becoming an entrepreneur way back when I graduated from the university in the Philippines. All I wanted was to work and improve my lot, so to speak. Mm-hmm. I'm an only child, and that meant for me to really work hard to give my parents a better life. You know, the sandwich generation in our culture, coming from a financially challenged background, I thought then that unless you are wealthy, then owning a business was close to impossible. However, that changed when while I was working in Brunei Darussalam, I was introduced to Amway a multi-level business company, you know. To this day, I've always been thankful to the leaders in that company who mentored me into becoming a business person of who I am today. Going back to your questions about my experience in the healthcare business, I have had privilege of working as a private caregiver before, so that was my introduction of um, healthcare. That made me understand the intricacies of caring, the one-on-one caring, building relationship with the client and the families. And then my ever-learning self decided to take up nursing assistant course. So then I go to study 
after passing the state exam, I took a caregiving job. So that way, you know, then I could enhance my knowledge by taking up basic nursing course in anatomy and physiology, the basic nursing courses, right. so that I will be more yeah. in-depth of what's, you know, what I'm taking care of. Yeah. Then I took up master's in health right. administration with focus. Okay, so, so you were talking about master's degree and yeah. you took that here in America. Can you give us more Give us more detail about that. Okay. So when I arrived in the U.S., my computer science degree wasn't considered equivalent to a U.S. degree in the same field. So I was advised to bridge the gap by going back to school, of course, uh, for information technology. I didn't have the financial capability then, so I embraced another opportunity instead of healthcare. So then eventually I enrolled in the University of Phoenix because of my journey in being a private caregiver and everything. So eventually after years, I eventually enrolled in the University of Phoenix okay, and okay. took up master's in health uh, administration informatics. Yeah. Given that I was working full time while studying, I happily graduated in 2011 with flying colors. Oh, congratulations, congratulations. So in 2018, this is one of the questions that I really like to give you. In 2018, you received the Governor's Trail Blazer Award for Women in Business, recognizing women pioneers in business community. Tell us more about that. Well, I was nominated by Wendy Bowman, Andrea Uges, and Allison Dodge for uh, Wisconsin Women Business Initiative Corporation. That's Webex for 2018 Governor Trail Blazers Award because, you know, there's a lot of women in business and then we are pioneering for, you know, like blazing, blazing our, bl the trail blazers, the people, the frontliners that's really uh, doing forging business in the community and creating jobs. So I was humbled and felt honored at the same time to be the only Asian awarded that year. Yeah. Congratulations for getting that award. I know you've been featured in different magazines, and I would say you are in Brava. You are in Inspired Magazine and a lot more because of your business, non-medical services to maintain loved ones' independent lifestyle. My question is, who is the person that inspire you or are you looking up to? I have several people who inspired me along my professional journey, my mentors in Amway. They were the foundation of who I am today, truly. Most of them were very successful in their career. They are vice president in banks, um, they, there's teacher, there's uh, um, electrical engineer, and so forth. You know, they're, they're very successful in their own field and taking the time to mentor me and mold me to who I am today. In business, I admire the story of Coco Chanel. And if, if we say Chanel, that's kind of like an iconic name. Mm -hmm. So one of those uh, days that I love reading, uh, and I come to the story of Coco Chanel, okay. which I admire her story so much. Mm -hmm. uh, Chanel was born in 1833. And I really look up at her because, you know, who she was raised with um, in an orphanage in France. At the age of 12, her mother passed away and her dad abandoned her and moved her to the central France in an orphanage and the nun really um, take care of her. So in short, her journey is really a struggle. And can I cannot imagine in 1800s, 1900s of being a female entrepreneur. Yeah. Right so. now, it's, it's really hard for me, you know, and then... I can imagine. So that really inspires me because, you know, if she can do it and now she's an iconic person, yeah. then we can follow her footsteps as yeah. a female businesswoman. Yeah. yeah, you are you are very busy with your profession and having one kid. But do you do something as for fun or what are your hobbies? Share those with us. I have few. I have few. But first is reading. That will be a part of me forever. What I love is 
it is I that you know like I when I'm reading something I could apply it immediately and that's and that's really very profound and my iPad has tons of books and my office has tons of books because it's part of me already and the second is traveling uh, I still remember when I was in high school I like exploring different places even with meager allowance in high school I always save like summertime. And so that I could save up that money and afforded me to local travels, different cities, and I learned something. And then when I was working in Brunei that time, I was able to travel to different places like, you know, like I explore Brunei, like there's yeah. different angles in Brunei that it's very fun. And then I went to Malaysia, traveled to Malaysia, Singapore, I went to Hong Kong. Then that time, uh, Hong Kong was still independent from China. I traveled to China, to Thailand in Indonesia. So I speak the language in Brunei, Malaysia, and Indonesia. So I kind of like, like that. And then I traveled, I learned a lot. And yeah. so I was exposed with different cultures and I learned a lot from traveling to different places. It's really, really eye-opener. And I also love cooking, baking, and gardening yeah. whenever I find time for my basic schedule. Yeah. So I, we at Global Inspiration, really is thankful to have you as our guest this week. And one last question, can you share any inspirational thoughts uh, with the viewers regarding your life, regarding your experiences, the virtues, or whatever you believe that's going to happen in the future? All right. So I grew up poor and uh, I didn't have toys, not much toys when I was growing up. So, but I never felt less, you know, because whatever la I lack materially, my parents uh, supplemented it with love. So I'm, I'm blessed with that. And my, my mother is my number one motivator. She is always by my side, supporting me in my decisions. Never recall an instance where she questioned me on my decision unless I asked for her opinion. Then along the way, there were people who looked down at me. You know, you're poor. So they look at you as if you're nothing. So, but they are instrumental in my journey. I am what I am today because once upon a time, I was there poor and the only person who believed in me is my mother. I use that as my inspiration to move forward and be someone I dreamed of becoming. So never hate the people who make you feel unimportant. Use that experience as an inspiration to realize your full potential. Yeah, I agree. And your story is very inspirational because I came from a poor country too, from a, from a poor country and a poor family. But it is us who make our life. It has, not, it has nothing to do with other people. You make your own life. Thank you very much, Juliet Nowak. And at Global Inspiration, you need to be seen, need to be heard, and be an inspiration to the world.